All right, so just a few moments ago, 2020 hopeful Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren released new policy plans. This is focused on Native Americans. MJ Lee is with me, who, of course, tracks the campaign very closely. Um, so this is big draft legislation, a number of other proposals. What is she putting forth? Well, this is probably one of her most detailed and politically significant plans she's put out so far this year. Uh, one part of this is a draft legislation that she put out with Congresswoman Deb Holland. She, of course, is one of two uh, first Native Americans elected to Congress who has endorsed Warren, uh, has everything to do with boosting funding for programs that are targeted at uh, Native Americans. Mm -hmm. And then a couple other key uh, pieces, uh, there's something called the Oliphant Fix. Uh, this has to do with the Supreme Court ruling that basically said tribal governments uh, have no criminal jurisdiction over non-Native Americans on tribal lands. The result of this has been that a lot of tribal people have not been able to seek justice even for some heinous crimes like in the case of rape. Mm -hmm. uh, other pieces of this deal with tribal lands and resources including uh, take away, taking away permits for uh, the Keystone and Dakota access pipelines uh, that go through tribal land. So again this is a very hefty bill and politically speaking uh, it's very interesting because the medium post that she put out was very long but made no mention of her own uh, family's ancestry. Right. This issue of course is the right. reason she fell in such hot political water earlier this year. I think she's been attacked by the president on this with that, you know, derogatory nickname that he's given That's her. Right. I find it interesting that she's going there on this. She could have stayed away, not focused on this a lot. She's not letting that hold her back. Yeah, and if you look ahead to her schedule, it's on Monday that she's going to take the stage with tribal leaders and face a lot of questions. I do think the discussions will largely be about substance, and I think putting out a plan today ensures that she has a lot to talk about, but I do think it's very possible that she gets asked these questions, and I think at some point she was going to have to address these kinds of questions because it is a concern that we have heard from some mm -hmm. voters when we are out on the trail. Right. Okay. Thank you, MJ, for walking us through it. We appreciate it very much. Chris Saliza, our editor at large, politics reporter, is here for his take. Good morning, Saliza. Hello, Poppy. Happy Hi. Friday. Hi. You too, my friend. But aren't you just working all weekend? Don't we make you work all weekend? Everybody's yeah. working for the weekend, Poppy. I of came course. up with that line. Working for the man. All right. So, Saliza, is this yeah. brave? Is this brave of Elizabeth Warren? Yeah, it's interesting. So, so as MJ laid out, um, it's a very detailed plan, uh, and this is in keeping, Poppy, with her idea of, I have a plan for that, right? If anything has rebuilt Elizabeth Warren from the start of her campaign to where she is now, it is this idea that she is the policy candidate. She's got ideas. She's got a fix. She's got ways to approach all of this stuff. Now, the start of her campaign, of course, began disastrously badly because late last year she did release this long video that was an attempt to put away or, or manage the fact that she had claimed Native American heritage on some forms uh, during her years in academia. Uh, that failed. There's no mention, as MJ said, of that in this Medium post. So. I think that it's a second bite at this apple, but it's a smarter one hmm. in that she's coming from a position of strength, Poppy, policy, mm -hmm. and saying, of course this is going to come up. She knows this is going to come up as part of the rollout and when she speaks next week, next week yeah. in Iowa at this important conference. And and, and this is a constituency that, you know, does not often get a lot of attention nope. from presidential candidates. And she's not only saying, I'm paying attention to this, I'm walking on stage with these tribal leaders, I'm putting out draft legislation, mm -hmm. not just, you know, a few bullet points. All right, let's turn the page here to really another interesting nugget from the Fox poll. You wrote about the guns, yeah. uh, gun numbers yesterday mm -hmm. and the assault weapons ban and the increased support for that among voters. But this is different. This is from the same poll. This is about the Democrats and what Democrats want. Only 48% of Democrats want the 2020 Democratic contenders to build on President Obama's legacy. Yeah. 47% want them to take a new approach. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, well, I would suggest that uh, the candidates have internal polling that suggests something similar because go back to our Detroit debates, exactly. What, the thing I was most struck by, I wrote about this at the time, the thing I was most struck by was the willingness of basically everyone on that debate stage, particularly in the second night, that Wednesday night debate that had Joe Biden in it and Kamala mm -hmm. Harris, mm -hmm. to sort of throw over Barack Obama's legacy. He didn't do enough on immigration, wasn't bold enough. Joe Biden, I mean, by necessity, was the only guy on the stage really standing up and defending 
Barack Obama's legacy, which is a remarkable thing. Those numbers are remarkable because when you consider who is the single most popular Democratic politician among Democrats, mm. it's Barack Obama. In fact, right. Barack Obama is probably one of the most popular politicians, uh, popular figures in the country, maybe only eclipsed by his wife, Michelle Obama. I was just going to so say it, that. It's, <laughs> it's, really, it's really a remarkable thing that Democrats really like him, I think really value what he did for the country, and yet very divided on whether the next nominee should carry on that legacy. It's, it's a fascinating finding. Except if you ask the president, he says, you have no choice but to vote for anyone else because look at your 401k. Yeah. I should note, by the way, you know, that's not exactly speaking to everyone in America because only yep. half of Americans have a penny in the stock market. Yeah, I mean, I do think, Poppy, that his best argument is on the economy broadly. The 401k sure. he uses as a stand-in for the economy. I would say, though, that Donald Trump's problem, and if you want to highlight his problem as it relates to getting reelected, it's this. In almost every poll, including the Fox poll, his approval on the economy among voters is over 50 percent. A majority think he's doing a good job in the economy. His overall approval in the Fox poll and CNN's polling everywhere else is in the mid-low 40s. That disconnect, usually if a president's yeah. approval rating on the economy is high, his overall approval rating is high, which means he's more likely than not to get reelected. Yep. That disconnect is a huge mm -hmm. problem for Donald Trump, and I don't know how he yeah. solves it. Look at Clinton during impeachment, right? I Absolutely. Mean, it, it's, it's a weird it's a it's, weird sort of reversal. Yeah, Donald Trump has been ahistorical in lots and lots of ways, and this is a really important way. Almost always we've seen mm -hmm. good economy, very likely to get reelected. Yeah. That's not necessarily the case here. Thanks, Eliza. Hope Thank to you. not hope to not see you hope on to television this morning. <laughs> <laughs> this weekend, I mean. Enjoy it. Thanks, Thanks Eliza.